The new Jeep Gladiator has been a smash hit since it was announced in 2018, and it really caught my eye whenever I test drove one in 2019 at Easter Jeep Safari. I actually own a diesel Jeep Gladiator, but it's not like the new ones. I picked up my Jeep truck a couple of years ago whenever I saved it from going to the metal recycler, and it's kind of a new thing where you can just go out and buy a Jeep with a diesel. This is something where I had to swap my own diesel engine into, and I'm really excited to see that newer diesel Jeeps are starting to emerge. Sometime around the end of 2019, you could start ordering the Jeep Wrangler in a diesel, and recently you could order the Jeep Gladiator with a new Eco Diesel. Before that, you could really only get the Jeep Grand Cherokee in a diesel, and even before that, you had two years, 2005 and 2006, where there was a diesel option on the Jeep Liberty. My wife and I actually own one of these 2005 Jeep Liberty diesels, and for us, it's been a very good rig uh, virtually trouble free throughout the entire ownership, our entire experience. I should also mention before we go forward, you're gonna be seeing me use this little audio recorder whenever we're on the highway because I don't trust the audio out of these action cameras and I wanna make sure that you guys can very clearly hear me anytime we're doing a test drive on the highway. So today on Dirt Lifestyle, we're gonna be going to test drive the new diesel Gladiator and I am towing my trailer behind this Jeep Liberty diesel because we're gonna hook up the trailer to the Gladiator and we're gonna put the Liberty on the trailer. I think that this 4,000 pound Jeep Liberty on a 1,600 pound trailer is gonna be a really, re a really good real world test for the Jeep Gladiator diesel. And we can just see how it handles all that weight. This is my friend, John, and John is a fellow diesel head like I am. So John is gonna be the buyer of today's Jeep Gladiator diesel. And you know, for a lot of reasons, we both love diesels because they're efficient, they're powerful. And today we're gonna to do a really nice little test. John ordered his new Jeep truck from a dealership up in Burlington. And this will give us a nice opportunity on the way back to hit a good stretch of freeway, a good stretch of back roads, hit lots of hills, and really test how good this Jeep Gladiator diesel is at hauling weight. Here we are. Yeah. Well, it's here. It's a good looking rig, man. Yeah, it is. overall opinion on the new Jeep Gladiator is there's a reason why they're selling a ton of these things. The fit and finish of everything is very nice. The features are one of a kind. You can take the roof off. It has a roll cage. There really is a lot of value in a truck like this and it dominates its class in a lot of ways. Now that this truck is offered with a diesel engine, it separates itself even more from Toyota and Ford and gives you a lot of options and a ton of bang for your buck. I'm not sponsored by Jeep or anything. I'm definitely not telling you to go buy one of these trucks, but this class is super competitive and I recommend at least checking these out because in my opinion, these are a viable option and John has definitely bought a nice rig here. After a quick peek under the hood, it was time for a test drive. We want to make sure that everything's functional before we take it off the lot, but at the same time, we really want to get on the road because we have quite a bit of distance to cover with the trailer and we want to beat all the traffic we can. And that was right into the torque band. Did you hear that shift? That was very 7.3 like. Just... It does have a 7.3 tone. It's interesting. It's like a muffled down. Yeah. There is like, I know what you're talking about though. There's like a clatter. Yeah. Well, that is like... like a nice diesel-y yeah. clatter. <laughs> yeah. It's like right when it gets up to that like perfect point, that motor's singing along and it's that happy sound. So we're going to bring you guys along for the ride with us. We are gonna take a route home that's gonna go through a mixed driving scenario because I think that freeway pulling isn't as difficult as all the starts and stops you get by going on back roads and whatnot so we're gonna do a good mix and you've got a route that you think would be nice right yeah take 202 to 203 John and I have planned a route that's gonna take us through a litany of towing conditions so we're gonna start with a little bit of stop and go traffic through town and then we're gonna work our way to I-5 where we can get up to 60, 70 miles an hour and take some serious hills at speed. 
Well, I'd say that going on stop and go traffic, it feels great. Yeah. I, I mean, I really, you can notice even as a passenger when you're in a truck that is overloaded because it feels like the trailer is trying to tell the truck what to do. I'm amazed at how smooth this is hauling right oh, now. Oh, yeah. You know, it really is handling that weight just fine. You wouldn't know there was, I mean, like seriously, 5,000 pounds on the back of this and it's... This is what I would expect a half-ton truck, like a modern half-ton truck to feel like. Yeah. And that's not what this is. No. This isn't a modern half-ton truck. This is, this is smaller so you can get into tight trails and uh, it's not, you know, this is a light-duty truck. It's like a Ranger or a the Colorado. And I think that um, for it to be pulling, like, early, the sensation we're getting at least is like it's pulling like a half-ton truck. I think yeah. it's pretty awesome. I would say it's right in line with my experiences towing with a... Uh, After getting a thumbs up from John and I on the performance around town, it was time to move on to I-5. Although I think that driving on a freeway can be easier on things like brakes and suspension, it definitely is a bigger challenge for the motor to be able to maintain speed while going up big hills or merging with traffic. 88 foot-pounds of torque, I believe, is the number. You've got 260 horse and 442, 442 okay. foot-pounds of torque, and we're going... 65, 70 miles an hour down the freeway. It feels like you have plenty. Oh yeah. It doesn't feel like you're short on power. There we go. That's my foot into it, towing, going uphill now. Dude, Dude you're moving speed. pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's not bad. That's that's crazy you know, for a V6. Really. In the camera, you're not gonna be able to feel the sensation of G-forces, but I, I can tell you, you could feel when he stepped on it. It, did, it, feels, it. it doesn't feel like he's using all of his power to just move this thing down the freeway. With a couple of small hills under our belt, it was time to hit something a little bit bigger and a little bit steeper. Well, we're about to go up our first real hill. Of course, the camera is going to be impossible for you to tell what that hill looks like, but that's not a bad grade. I mean, there's a truck lane, so we'll see. What are you at? You're at 70? And it says that you're getting 48 miles a gallon? Yeah. Uh -huh. Do you feel like that might be a little bit uh, generous? I'm guessing that it's probably 20. <laughs> That's generous for sure. 49 seems generous. Well, it seems to be doing good up the hill. Yeah. Here we are. We're about to pass the semi truck. Yeah, it dropped into seventh or sixth gear. It was in eighth right before the hill. So we dropped down, what are you at? Uh, just under 3,000 RPM? Nice. Still pulling like there's not a trailer. That's that's so impressive, man. Yeah, Makes me wonder about my one ton life. Yeah. Do I need a one ton? Yes, I don't know. Do. Yeah, I probably do. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we were just talking about the coolant temperature. Yeah. And what did what did you see? So we got two twenty one. Two twenty one at the top of that big hill. Yeah. I mean, that's up there, there's no doubt about it. I wouldn't say that's excessive. Excessive is like two forty. You're starting to Maybe. So, I mean, well, we're dropping fast. We're at 215 now. Yeah, it should drop fast now that we're not on a hill. Definitely. Transmission temperatures hold a rock solid 203. It's not even at the normal line, so the, that's cool. That is cool. Uh, well, those, those are both really important measurements. When you're towing, I mean, trans temp yeah. and engine coolant temp are both so important. So we got 237 oil temperature, 42 pounds of oil pressure. See if I can get a focus on it. Yeah, I can. A little bit. Oil, oil light. Yeah, it better be it's brand new. <laughs> <laughs> nice. All right. Well, we're still cooking and booking then. As we marched our way up and down the interstate, we definitely noticed that as you took a big grade, the temperature would rise and fall accordingly. But this is where our experience differed drastically from the editors of Motor Trend. Motor Trend has an article online that's been floating around all over social media called 2021 Jeep Gladiator Eco Diesel First Test. Not the perfect truck you were expecting. I will link this article in the description of this video so you guys can read along or you can read it after you watch the video or whatever. Well, I think that this is a good article. I've been a fan of Motor Trend forever. They've done a lot in the automotive space and I'm certainly not trying to start a feud, a feud with my little YouTube channel against Motor Trend. However, I think that there is some things that they tested in a way that is a little bit unfair. And I'm not saying that they're wrong or anything like that, but I am saying that whenever I go to buy different things, whether it's camera equipment or vehicles or tools for the shop, anything like that, 
one article can change my mind whether or not I make that purchase. And there's two things that I didn't like in this article. I liked everything but two things. They did a great job. It's the, the towing section that bothered me. I have a lot of experience towing cross country, triple axle, gooseneck trailers, small utility trailers, camp trailers, all kinds of different stuff. I've towed with my motorhome, I've towed with my Liberty, towed with my dually, um, all kinds of stuff. So I have a lot of experience towing and immediately a few things jumped out at me. So in the article it says, hooked up to a, a 23 foot, 5,200 pound Airstream, which it says is a 467 pound tongue weight per the manufacturer. So I don't know if that means that they actually measured and weighed the tongue weight because you can get hitches that will weigh that for you or if they're saying that's what the, the manufacturer recommends the amount of tongue weight you should have. But in any case, um, it says that they have it on an adjustable height hitch ball, not a weight distribution hitch. The Gladiator Sport Eco Diesel was nearly undrivable and borderline dangerous on anything but smooth, flat, straight roads. Everything caused the trailer to wander. Bumps, broken pavement, potholes, grooved pavement, wind, wash from passing vehicles, you name it. Add any compound factor like a hill or descent, curve in the road, or construction zone, and it was a recipe for disaster. So that is very damning. That's a serious thing to say about a truck. So I think that there is a few different things going on here. When you look at the pictures of this trailer, the axles are located in the center of the trailer. Um, anyone who's hauled long distances or hauled uh, a bunch of weight or even a little weight, you quickly find out that having the axles towards the back of the trailer pushed a little bit more rear gives you more tongue weight and gives you a lot more stability and it makes it to where it resists the trailer's ability to wander and try to control that truck. So if you look at all the footage that we have in this video, you're gonna notice that my trailer that has our Liberty on it um, the axles are pushed back a little bit to put more tongue weight onto the truck itself. And that makes a giant difference in its ability to wander. I would guess that a trailer like this, especially with the way the balance is, maybe it has its water tanks in the front. You're supposed to fill those water tanks to give you the required tongue weight before you even get it on the road. Maybe that's not the case, I don't know. But I do know that I have hours of footage of us towing our setup and you can look through, there is never one instance where the truck is wandering, the, or the trailer is wandering and it's pulling the truck around. Everything is stable and smooth 100% throughout this entire video. And I mean, we stopped, I sent my drone up a bunch of times. We, um, I was changing camera angles all around and it didn't matter what the conditions were. Braking, steering, all the handling conditions, big bumps, potholes, speed bumps, everything, nothing shook our experience. It was the complete opposite of what they're describing here in this article. I don't know what happened here, but clearly their experience was drastically different than you can physically see in this video yourself. If I had one shred of evidence of this being unstable, I would show you guys. I've got, I don't work for Jeep. <laughs> I've got no one to try and, um, no one to try and protect with my opinions here. The second thing that I thought was uh, really interesting here is the power. If you read through further down in the article, um, it says here, towing up a steep, steep hill, the Eco Diesel was tapped out at 58 miles per hour with my foot on the floor, while the gas-powered Gladiator needed to run at Redline in the same location, uh, hooked to the same trailer. It was able to not only maintain its speed, but accelerate up the hill. This second issue is I I can't I can't understand why they would have that issue and we wouldn't other than the fact that where we live is really close to sea level. This is a turboed vehicle. If they're in Colorado or something like that, I didn't see in the article where they made mention as to where this test took place, but if they're somewhere where it's a really high elevation, turbos, I mean they have to work 2 3 times as hard in order to get the same amount of pressure. So I would guess that if they are at high elevation, it would make it to where their turbo can't um, keep up with the demand and give it enough boost to maintain speed, or there is some sort of a malfunction with the vehicle because, I mean, you can see in our footage, we were maintaining 70 up hills that, I mean, it was a steady grade. I wish that I knew what the grade was. I looked it up, I can't, I can't find any information on it, but there was multiple times where there was a truck lane to where all the heavy people towing get off on the right and then everybody else can continue straight 
on the freeway. So we every hill we took at 70, it never went down under 70. We just maintained speed the entire way up. And I do want to point out that our load was heavier than their load. I think he said it was 5,200 pounds. Well, a stock um, Liberty is 4,000, just over, it's like 4,033, the, the diesel version. And then you add like a 100 pound winch and 100 pound bumper and whatever was inside, right? Plus about 1,600 pounds of trailer. So we're comfortably around 6,000 pounds. Um, we're definitely not lighter than they were. And somehow we were still able to have no issues with the steep hills and the power that we needed in order to have a good time in this truck. The last part of this towing test is what I think is the most difficult of all, and that is a lot of accelerating up to like 50, 55, and then stopping back down to zero, going through back roads, hitting potholes, going through small towns. This is really going to test your brakes. It's gonna test your suspension. It's gonna greatly test your stability. And I gotta be honest, this Jeep truck did it with flying colors. I own a one ton dually truck specifically for this scenario. I think that this is the toughest on all these different components, but I think that with this load specifically, this Jeep truck seems to handle just fine. Personally, I wouldn't go much heavier than this with all the experience that I have. I know where that gets you. You don't want to tow too heavy. However, a truck that is virtually the size of an S10 or a Colorado or a Ranger that's able to comfortably tow a full-sized vehicle is no doubt an impressive feat. And keep in mind, this truck has selectable lockers front and rear. It has a roll cage. The roof comes off. This really is a unique truck. It's gonna get good MPG because of that diesel engine, whether it's loaded or unloaded. Even the interior is pretty great. It's quiet, it's comfortable, and I think that this truck has a ton to offer. However, there are definitely some cons associated with a truck like this. The bed is very short, the payload is super small, and because they had to stretch the wheelbase to turn it into a truck instead of just put a really small bed on the back of a Jeep, there are some sacrifices off-road. But I think that this is a very nice blending of on and off-road performance, and the fact that you can tow a relatively heavy load with it makes it even more appealing to the right customer. Alongside these list of cons is the price. The price is over 60 grand all said and done when you start to pay all the different licensing fees and whatnot that it takes to buy a new vehicle, but I don't think that in today's market that is necessarily out of control. You can easily reach this price range with the Toyota Tacoma and you're not gonna get the same kind of mileage or the towing capacity. So it really just comes down to whatever your brand preference is and whatever your needs are out of the vehicle itself. For me, I wouldn't buy a truck like this because it couldn't meet the demands that I need out of a truck, but I do think that this is an important truck to look at for the right person, and I will be recommending it to some of my friends who don't need a tow as heavy as I do. In the future, I think that you're gonna see a lot of aftermarket towing modifications for this, specifically in the cooling system. That cooling system getting that hot on a day that was low 50 is a problem. That's a huge problem. If you live in Arizona and you're going to be trying to tow a load like this and it's 100 degrees or even 90 degrees, you're probably going to have to stop and pull over at the top of every hill and you're definitely going to have to watch that needle. All in all, I think this is an impressive truck and even for the price, you actually are getting a lot for your money. What else is there to say? I think this is a great truck. I think that it was a great article. I think that uh, we had different results than they did in their towing test but that's okay, we can all be friends. So I encourage you to go check out the article. I encourage you to check out the Gladiator Diesel if you haven't already. When it's unloaded, it is a monster. I think that, um, honestly, I wanna see this in the snow. I think that it is gonna be a snow demon with the right tires, crazy power, long wheelbase is very forgiving. It's gonna be pretty fun. So in the future, I'd like to get together with John. I think we're gonna go do some overlanding and you're gonna see this truck again. If you enjoyed the video, make sure you give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. I do some review stuff like this on here, but to be completely upfront and honest with you, I don't do a lot of it. Most of what I do is how to, a lot of fabrication, a lot of building stuff in my shop, and then going out and uh, you know stress testing it in the woods. So if you're into that kind of thing, then make sure you stick around. Also, for those of you that are the usual customers, you come here every video, let me know what you think of these kinds of videos. I'd be down to do more of them if you're into them. If you want to help support the channel, you can go to thedirtlifestyle.com. We have t-shirts, hats, net gaiters, decals, all kinds of stuff, all the same stuff I tell you about every video. We also have a link to our Patreon account there as well. We have a Dirt Lifestyle Facebook group called Dirtbag Mafia. 
It is awesome. The people on there are outstanding. So make sure you check that out if you haven't already. If you want to follow me on social media, I'm at Your Lifestyle Nate. We'll see you next time.